thank you to Enric for inviting me to speak here today. I'm very, very thankful for this opportunity. Second of all, I'm about to throw a lot of information at all of you in this next 10 minutes in the hopes that you will take it and run with it, putting aside your political ideology and absorb the fact that the 19-year-old standing in front of you is one of thousands who has watched their community fall to pieces with no one to put it back together again. I'm speaking out against gun violence for selfish reasons. I'm trying to protect me, my friends, my family, in, in which we're trying to make a future in which gun violence stops existing. I'm about to give you guys some tools to fight against gun violence too, but if you look at me today with a closed mind, you're gonna have to open back up or this problem is never gonna go away. I'm also gonna tell you good people about gun violence in America, the NRA, and what we as a collective can do to stop the cycle that our country has fallen into. Before I begin, I'd like to clarify that when I talk about the NRA, I do not mean the members who are within it. I mean the people who run the organization at the top. I would also like to say that I, along with the other students that I work with, it with March for Our Lives, are not trying to steal the guns away from the citizens in this country. It's not actually something we're trying to do. <laughs> In fact, if you look up our website, marchforourlives.com, you can very clearly see under our policy agenda tab all of the changes that we do want to make in the effort of making our country safer, like extreme risk protection orders, comprehensive background checks, mandatory safe storage Woo! and death reporting, funding for gun violence research, and high capacity magazine bans, just to name a few. We want all of these at a state and federal level. Nowadays, anyone who knew what the NRA was like when it first started would be blown away to see what it's become now. But for us, the shift has been so gradual that many of us have missed it and assumed that it's just always been like this. <clears throat> My dad came with his sister and parents from Cuba in 1968 and moved to Austin, New York. He and my abuelo joined the NRA as soon as they could and as soon as they got here. One day, my dad was at the shooting range that all the kids in the area went to, and my dad hears this yelling behind him. He hears, God, you good for nothing, worthless piece of shit. God, what a fucking disgrace. It was a full-grown man speaking to his child, holding a gun taller than him. As soon as my dad saw this, he was like, no, 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 this is not my culture, this is not what I signed up for, this is not what I came here for, revoked, deleted, reported goodbye, and he canceled his membership to the NRA immediately. The NRA used to be an organization in which responsible and proud gun owners could be in good company, celebrate gun safety, participate in sharpshooting contests and firearm collecting, whereas now the NRA is an organization that takes kickbacks from gun manufacturers, bankrolls politicians that they want in power, and has lobbyists that make sure that the bills the NRA likes are the only ones that get passed. That's a dramatic shift. They went from being nonprofit to for profit while remaining under the nonprofit title. The NRA gets money every time a gun is sold. They put that money towards putting politicians that they want in power. Every time a shooting happens, sales go through the roof. The NRA isn't fighting for your Second Amendment rights anymore. They're fighting to fill their wallets and get into the pockets of politicians everywhere. <laughs> Profiting off of perpetuating murder, that is some water news from Monsters Inc. level fucked up. Amen. One of the main reasons that most other countries do not have gun violence on the scale that we do is because they don't have the NRA pushing with everything that they've got against gun safety legislation. The NRA has been utilizing anti-gun legislation reform propaganda to twist the minds of Americans into a mob made up of various talking points made to refute common sense and shut down conversations. A good guy with a gun would stop a bad guy with a gun. Guns don't kill people, people kill people. If a bad guy wants a gun that bad, he'll find a way to get one. Cars kill people, should we ban cars now? He was a crazy lone wolf. Over the summer, I had conversations with people all over the country on the Road to Change tour that we had, and I heard many of these talking points thrown right back at me from a lot of people. And every time they were brought up, I countered it with some good old fashioned common sense. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm giving you these talking points so that you can tell them to your relatives that you don't really want to talk politics with over Thanksgiving, like was just mentioned. <laughs> to quote, a good guy with a gun will stop a bad guy with a gun, the common sense answer is, one, why does the bad guy have to have a gun in the first place? Oh yeah, the NRA made sure he could buy it. Second of all, if someone is shooting into a room with an AR-15, it is not safe or even feasible for a good guy in the situation to shoot towards the person shooting, because in real life, 
Life isn't a video game. There's no outline showing who the bad guy is. In many cases, there have been police officers on the scene of shootings that were not able to take down the shooter or help in any way with their firearms, as they would have shot another innocent person. Three, there have been several cases in which black men have stopped shootings, gotten no recognition, or murdered for it. <laughs> James Shaw Jr., Waffle House shooting, grabbed the gun from the shooter with his bare hands, and Jamel Robertson, a black security guard, who was shot by police after detaining a possible shooter. Four, we need to keep race in mind when addressing gun violence because police brutality, white cops killing black kids because they look threatening, that's gun violence and that's racism. Five, how do you know if somebody actually is a good guy? Sounds to me like we need some background checks, <laughs> which are incidentally supported by 97% of the people within these United States. Wait, what? Common sense gun reform? Ladies and gentlemen, the NRA has been defeated by its own logic! I had a really fun time writing that line. Over the summer in Utah, one of my coworkers from March for Our Lives was confronted by a man who asked him, so you don't think I should be able to protect people in a time of crisis with my firearm? And my coworker said, you're not a policeman in this scenario, are you, sir? And he says, no, just a concerned citizen. And he responded, well, well then, sir, you just described yourself as Batman. <laughs> the NRA banks on this vigilante hero mentality to sweep through mobs of people before they can think, so that they speak over those who have survived, telling them, next time I'll protect you, but there shouldn't have been a first time. Protection? Why protect yourself from a problem you can stop from happening in the first place? Woo! <clears throat> Quote, if a bad guy wants a gun that bad, he'll find a way to get it. The common sense answer is, but wouldn't it be better to make it harder? Anyways. <laughs> in so many places in the country, it's already as easy to buy a gun as it is to buy a burner phone. If there were more laws in place to make it harder for someone to get a gun, don't you think it would be harder for someone to get a gun? <laughs> the reason behind this talking point is that if it's easy to get a gun, the NRA more, makes more money. Because they get money every time a gun gets sold. See, it's this whole circle thing where the, it always just comes back to the NRA making money and using it to fuck over everybody. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, say it. To quote, guns don't kill people, people kill people. The common sense answer is, granted partially true, guns don't move on their own, inanimate objects don't tend to do that. But that exact reaction that I just had here is what the NRA is banking on logical people to think because it completely steers the conversation away from guns. The purpose of a gun is to kill or injure an animal or person. And this phrase tries to make the people talking about gun legislation forget the physical damage that guns do. Take knives, for example. There's no way any one person could injure 17 people and kill 17 people in less than seven minutes with knives without being stopped. <laughs> Gunshot wounds have an incredibly high rate of mortality, not to mention the trauma that the victims, families, communities are left with after those wounds heal. We need to keep guns in the conversation when addressing gun violence. I didn't think we'd have to actually outline that one, but apparently it's, you know, <laughs> important. <laughs> to quote, cars kill a lot of people, should we ban cars? The common sense answer is, cars are modes of transportation and guns are weapons. Also, in today's society, we acknowledge that cars are dangerous and kill a lot of people and have addressed it properly. When shootings happen, no one blames the gun, just the shooter and the victims. But when cars crash, we evaluate how safe the car was for the driver. Cars have airbags and seatbelts now. It's illegal for children to sit in the front seat. They're made of different materials that respond to crashes better. And you cannot buy or drive a car without having practiced driving before, without having a license to prove that you can drive and you can do it safely. person, the common sense answer is, look at the pattern that the media and the NRA follows. They only say this when the shooter is white. If they're brown, they call it terrorism, and if they're black, they call it gang related. Yeah. The messaging that the NRA puts out in regards to only associating mental illness with mass shooters is disgusting and pathetic. And that alone has Woo! set us God knows how many years behind in our fight for mental health reform and awareness. People who are mentally ill are more likely to kill themselves than anyone else. 
60% of all gun violence in the United States is made up of suicides. When talking about gun violence, we need to address this, create better systems that prevent people from taking their lives, and get real treatment for those with mental illnesses rather than listen to people on TV scream that they're crazy and evil. Yes! This train of thought brings me to school safety. March for Our Lives is not an organization that only cares about stopping gun violence in schools. We care about stopping gun violence in America. If we only stopped gun violence in schools, where does that leave concerts, front porches, movie theaters, bus stops, nightclubs, churches, front steps of churches? If we stop gun violence from happening in one place, it's gonna keep happening in other places, and that's not really stopping gun violence. It's almost like saying, guns don't kill people, places kill people, and then build those places out of Kevlar to protect the people in them instead of actually addressing the guns. No part of my talking about school safety is directed at any person or people fighting for school safety, but as someone who's still in school, I have a lot to say about this, because it's fucked up. <laughs> Adults want kids to be safe, not feel safe. They want schools to look like prisons, with barbed wire fences, and single points of entry, and metal detectors, and clear backpacks, and furniture bolted down to the floor, bulletproof glass, and hard corners. Students want schools without shooter drills, with trauma and LGBT plus trained mental health professionals, with administrators who don't treat us with the contempt that they would for a cockroach they're gonna step on, with healthy lunches, with art and music and athletic programs, with teachers who get paid a reasonable salary and are forced to carry a gun, where police officers don't roam around with AR-15s and arrest the black and brown kids for behavior no worse than their white dueling counterparts, under the guise that they're there for Woo! student safety, Woo! where their basic human rights are denied on the The NRA has made it that easy. Long story short, I am tired. I'm tired, but I'm sad. I'm wearing a shirt today that says, I don't want my friends to die anymore. For a reason. The reason is that they keep dying. Everyone I know is filled with sadness, trauma, rage, terror, grief, pain, a lot of feelings that don't make sense to teenagers. And we feel this way for reasons that a lot of people in charge of this country still don't understand. And a lot of them are still in power because they're incumbents, or because of gerrymandering, or voter fraud, or any of the other fucked up shit that some representatives pull to stand on. <laughs> it's up to us to change the system that allows them to do this. Just like how in the last midterm election we saw an incredible rise of youth voter turnout. Voter turnout all over the country that led to more representation in our government than in the history of this country. It's our collective duty to vote in 2020, and in every election after that is just as important. For all the people that we believe will bring lasting positive change to our country. Don't get distracted by who's running for president. Focus and get down into the nitty gritty. Look who's running in your district for house, in your Senate, in your state for Senate, in your county for school board, regardless of party affiliation, because your vote affects more than just your life. And party identification alone doesn't always tell you what you need to know about the candidate. More than voting, you can take your stories in person to the representatives and Congress people and tell them what matters most to you, their constituent, that they get done in office. All I know is that all of this is common sense. That everyone in this country deserves to be safe from gun violence. And that when we work together, we make the change that we need to see in the world. Thank you. Woo!